In this video from Learn Electrics, we'll look at the tables section at the back of the wiring regulations book. We will be referring to the Brown Amendment 2 book for page numbers, etc. We've often been asked about the tables and their relevance to the book, work and exams. Questions like, how do we use table of figures? What is table of tables at the back of the book? And will I get exam questions on the tables? Look at the contents page on page 3 of the Brown Amendment 2 book. At the bottom of page 3, we find an entry for table of figures and table of contents, telling us that these tables begin on page 569 and 573 respectively. Learn to find these pages quickly, especially if you are studying for an exam. How do we find the table of figures? It's on pages 569 to 572. And you'll see that it's a list, a table, of all the figures that appear in the wiring regulations book. And table of tables can be found on pages 573 to 575. All the named tables that appear in the brown book will be listed here. Each entry will show the table number, the title of the table as shown in the book, and the page number of where it can be found. Looking at the table of figures, what does it tell us? How do we use the information on these pages to our best advantage? Take figure 82.1 as an example. The letters fig are telling us it is a figure, a drawing or similar and the 82.1 can be broken down as follows. The first number, the 8, tells us that this figure is in part 8 of the book. Then we have a 2, making 82, so it is in chapter 82. Then we have dot 1, indicating it is the first figure to be found in chapter 82. So, 82.1. Part 8, Chapter 82, Figure Number 1. Easy with practice. Then we have the title of that figure, as it appears in the book. Examples of PEI in this case. Finally, we have the page number where it can be found in the brown book. Let's take another example. Almost halfway down page 570, we will find a listing for figures 709.1 and 709.2 and the listing tells us that both will be found on page 274. Decoding this we know it will be in part 7, special locations as it starts with a 7 and 709 tells us that it is in section 709 for marinas. Dot 1 indicates the first figure on the page, shown here in blue. And dot 2 is for the second figure, shown in a beige colour. Some of the wiring regulations will reference a figure directly, as with regulation 709.553.1.10 on page 273. This regulation tells us to look at figure 709.3, which is on page 275. Figures are visual presentations of something used in order to convey an idea or method using picture information. They can be in the form of drawings, charts, graphs, etc. In the wiring regulations book, they are listed strictly in the order that they appear in the book. They will follow the part order from the page 3 contents page. Figure 2.1 from part 2 will appear earlier in the table of figures than figure 44.4 in part 4. Now we can look at table of tables. This is structured in a similar fashion to the table of figures and being able to use table of tables is so very beneficial. For the wiring regulations, a table is often an arrangement of data in rows and columns a gridded structure used 
to present relevant information or specific values for use in electrical calculations, circuit design, maintenance requirements and for comparison against test results. Rather than conveying an idea, they are giving usable data. Look at the table of tables as being split into three blocks. This makes it much easier to follow the numbering convention that is used. Page 573 and part of page 574, the blue parts here, list the tables that are found in the parts section of the brown wiring regs book. The pink colour shows the tables that appear in appendix 4 only and there are lots of them. The tables in the yellow section relate to other parts of the regulations, external influences, label sizes, SPDs and so on. Looking at the tables relating to the parts section of the wiring regulations book, we can use table 41.1 as an example. This is listed at the top of page 573 and directs us to page 65. Looking at the numbers, we can see that this will be part 4 and that it is chapter 41 and the first table that is in that chapter. There are also annexes to some of the chapters, a few pages with additional information to support that particular chapter and we show an example here, A444.2. Because the table is in the annex, the table begins with the letter A for annex. It is an annex to chapter 44 and this is the second table in that annex. Take a look at page 122 and at the pages around it. There are several annexes to this chapter. With some practice, you will soon find your way around the annexes. The worst thing to do is to pretend that they don't exist, but they do, and they contain useful additional information. Let's look at some of the tables that relate to Appendix 4 of the Wiring Regs book. We should start with Table 4AB, to do with permitted voltage drop. Learn to find this page. It contains useful information that you may need for some questions in your 18th edition exam. Table of Tables will direct you to page 430. What data is making up this page? It talks about a public low voltage distribution system. For most of us, this will be the national grid. What comes in at the front door to the house, the shop or factory. So most times we are interested in the top row. For lighting only circuits, the voltage drop from the nominal voltage should not exceed 3% and for all other circuits, the maximum permitted voltage drop is 5%. Doing the maths, for a nominal 230 volt supply, as we find in most UK homes, this equates to no more than 6.9 volts for lighting and 11.5 volts for all other circuits. As just mentioned, this table often features in exam questions. There is also a list of all but a couple of the Appendix 4 tables on page 420. The top half of the page is predominantly about rating factors and the bottom half of the page is data for specific electrical cables and we can take a look at these now. Take table 4D5 as an example. This is a frequently used table and one that is often referred to in exams and assessments. This table is listed at the top of page 575 in Table of Tables and directs us to page 456. The title of this table is 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat profile with protective conductor, copper conductors, and more commonly known as twin and earth cable. If you're working in domestic properties, you may be referring to this table all the time. What we can do is to look at the various sections that make up this table, and then you will, hopefully, understand how important this table is. Starting on the left side, we have a column 
of the different size conductors available in the standard off-the-shelf twin and earth cable. We're interested in the line and neutral conductors and how they perform in fault-free conditions, so the earth conductor is not listed here. Across the top are the different installation reference methods and a brief description of each. Below that is a cross-reference section where the conductor size can be compared to the installation reference method, allowing us to read off the maximum current carrying capacity for that configuration. And finally, on the right, is a column that lists the voltage drop numbers to use in calculations. The voltage drop for the whole cable is shown as millivolts per ampere per metre length of the line conductor. We can show how this works and make an example calculation by asking a typical exam question on voltage drop and working through to the answer. The question asks, a 230 volt 20 amp heater circuit is supplied from the public low voltage distribution system and is wired in 2.5 square millimetre 70 degrees Celsius thermoplastic insulated and sheathed flat cable with a protective conductor. In other words, twin and earth cable, with a circuit length of 40 metres and clipped direct. Use the formula shown below to calculate the actual voltage drop and decide if this is below the maximum permitted voltage drop and an acceptable cable size for this application. Here is the formula to use and here is what we know from the question or from the appropriate tables. MVAM is found in table 4D5. IB and L are given in the question. From table 4AB, we know that the permitted maximum voltage drop is 5% of nominal, or 11.5 volts. For an acceptable circuit, the volts drop will be equal to or less than that. This is the calculation for 2.5 square millimetre conductors. We are only interested in the line and neutral as we are assuming a fault-free circuit. And 40 metres is the length just one way, not measured there and back. The actual voltage drop is 14.4 volts and is greater than the permitted 11.5 volts. We can say that this is unacceptable and we should reconsider our design options. In order to comply with the wiring regulations requirements, we need to either reduce the current IB, but this is not possible, as this is the current demand of the heater. Turn it on, and it draws 20 amps of current. Can we reduce the length of the circuit? Not possible, as the heater must be located where it is. It's no good having a bathroom heater in the kitchen, just because it's closer to the consumer unit. Is it possible to reduce the MVAM number? Yes, it is. We can do this by increasing the cross-sectional area of the conductors. By installing larger CSA conductors, a bigger size cable, we will reduce the voltage drop in the cable. See table 4D5, page 456, and find 4mm on the left column. The corresponding entry in the rightmost column shows that for a 4 square millimetre conductor the MBAM is 11. Let's put that number into the calculation and see what answer we get. The same calculation but now with 11 for the MBAM number. This is a bigger cable size so the voltage lost in the cable will be reduced. Putting the numbers into a calculator we have an actual voltage drop of 8.8 .8 volts for the 4mm conductors. This is less than the permitted maximum of 11.5 volts and therefore an acceptable value for this circuit. Before we leave this subject, be aware that sometimes tables will move or be deleted. The BS7671 wiring regulations book is constantly being amended and updated in line with current technical trends and thinking. There is nothing that we can do except to just absorb the changes 
into our working lives and embrace them. A frequent exam question and something that often comes up on site is this. A 6 square millimetre cable is totally surrounded by thermal insulation for a length of 200 millimetres. What derating factor should be applied to the current carrying capacity of the cable? There used to be a table for this, but not anymore. Table 52.2 has an entry near the middle of page 573. The book tells us that this has now been moved to Appendix 4 as item 2.6 and it is no longer found on page 146. We will find the table in Appendix 4 on page 423. Let's go there now. This is the table that used to be in part 5 of the book. Now it is item 2.6 in Appendix 4 and no longer listed as a named table. It is a very useful item to be able to find as it is a popular choice with exam question setters. So, to answer our question, what derating factor should we apply to our 6mm cable? Item 2.6 gives the answer. For a cable totally surrounded by thermal insulation for 200mm of its length, we should apply a derating factor of 0 0.63. This effectively reduces the current carrying capacity of the cable. In summary then, do not underestimate the usefulness of table of figures and table of tables at the back of the book. Table of figures is on pages 569 to 572 and table of tables is found on pages 573 to 575. An easy way to find them, they are immediately before the index. And that's how I find them. Especially learn to use table of tables. It will help you to easily navigate around the book and to home in on relevant items and regulations. On site or when designing an installation, it will save you time. In an exam, it will help to improve your pass mark. Time is limited in exams and you need to find the correct answers quickly. Thank you for watching. It really is appreciated and I hope that you found the video useful and informative with a little more knowledge in your mental toolbox. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics all one word into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel so don't miss the next one. And once again thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.